the Word of God, which is the foundation for living. From Westminster Presbyterian Church, 20 6th Avenue Southwest, with Reverend Joseph Reed. And now, following these announcements, Reverend Reed. Good morning. I am Eugenia Henry, a member of Westminster Presbyterian Church. Thank you for tuning in today to hear God's Word. Please continue to join us each Sunday morning from 1015 until 1030. And now, here are today's announcements. The Career Circus Clothes Drive for Charity is on. Donations of men, women, and children's clothes are requested. Our Sunday school begins at 9.30 each Sunday morning. All ages are welcome. Mrs. Bonetta Wyatt is our superintendent. Our weekly Bible class meets each Monday at 5.30 p.m. and is led by our pastor, the Reverend Joseph Reed. Finally, please know that you are always welcome to worship with us each Sunday. Our service begins promptly at 11 a.m. and ends at approximately 12 noon. Following music by our choir, the Reverend Reed will present today's sermon. Thank you.
Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for reviving us. Allow us to dwell in your kingdom. Amen. Amen. Strange scripture we read this morning. The Sadducees was always trying to trick Jesus. And they brought him a doozy about all these different wives. This was the law of Moses, that a man marries the wife of the wife. When she, the husband dies, the brother would marry the wife. And of course, y'all know in that day, there may have been more than one wife. So you have to understand the context of what the Jews were talking about in that day. But Jesus, as usual, got through it easily by taking them back to what was important. And our text was the essence of what Jesus said. Listen to what he said right at the end. Which one will be with the wife in heaven was the question, in the resurrection more precisely. And Jesus said, and they no longer die, mm -hmm. for they are like angels watching over me, right? Mm -hmm. They are God's children since they are children of the resurrection. You may have heard the story of three churchmen who were discussing what they would like people to say about them at their funeral. One of the men said, I want people to say I was a great humanitarian and who cared about the community. I love my city. I love my nation. I love my church community and my family community. The other man said, I was a great husband, father, family man, and I was an example for everybody to follow. The third man said, I want people to say, when they look in my face, look, he's moving. <laughs> because I would rather be seen than to be viewed. <laughs> and so it goes. All of us want to get to heaven, but none of us want to die. And it is as it should be. Life is about living. But soon enough, hopefully you'll learn that death is a continuation of life as we know it on earth. But it's not a continuation of life as we understand it. But a rebirth, a restoration, and a resurrection in God. Please join me as I speak to you on the subject, understanding revivification. That's a big word. Somebody told me, what does that mean? Some guy walking on the street. He said, I don't know if I want to come to that church with a word like that on your marquee, revivification. We'll talk about that. Once again, our text comes from the book of Luke. As we shared last week, Luke was written to strengthen the faith of all believers, and to answer the attacks of unbelievers. Our text comes from the 20th chapter of Luke. In this chapter, Jesus declares his authority over humanity, tells the parable of the vineyard, and answers questions concerning paying taxes. In our scripture reading and text, Jesus tells the Sadducees, who denied the resurrection, that marriage is an institution created by humanity, or by humankind, and in the world to come, we who choose to be saved need not worry about our loved ones because we all will be revived in God if we know Jesus Christ. You don't have to worry about that. I've heard of a man who wanted to visit the church on 29th Wesley Avenue. That's a fictitious address. 
located near a cab stand on a train station. He held the cab and said, take me to the nearest church in town. The driver came out of the cab, very much annoyed, because the taxi was standing at 29 Wesley Avenue. He opened the door and said to the man, Mr., we are at 29 Wesley Avenue. And the man said, okay, but next time, don't drive so fast. <laughs> and that's the way life is. <laughs> Always in the present. Before we know it, it's gone. The truth is, we only have the present. And until we learn that, we only live now in the moment. We will continue to sleep in the past and the future and miss the essence of God. Why do we keep missing God? We lose God because we do not understand what it means to be truly revived, truly restored, truly energized in God, truly reborn in Jesus Christ. And until we are our spiritual selves, until we are our spiritual lives, we will keep on passing life by and life will keep on passing us by. As we focus on the past, which is gone, and the future, which may never come. Since I know this is not the way we want to live, especially as Christians, I want to share an understanding of what it means to be re-energized in God. You ever been to a revival? Those were not such bad things. Sometimes we need to be what? Revived, re-energized, restored. Because some of us work so hard for so long that we get what? Tired. We just get tired. And it's usually the same what? 10% doing the what? 100%. <laughs> we need to change that because we all can benefit from revivification. Revivification means to be revitalized. This is the message. Those of you who are writing the message, you hear me say that many times. Here's the message. Revivification means to be revitalized or to be woken up by a true acceptance of Christ as your Lord and Savior. A true acceptance of Christ as your Lord and Savior. When we are revived in God, we start seeing life and death and death and life as the same thing. Revivification means being restored. Revivification means being reborn. Revivification means being revived by Christ through his resurrection and victory over death. We now have an opportunity for that same resurrection. When we are reborn, we are able to look directly, watch this, into a spiritual fact. And the truth of that fact is revealed. I said a spiritual fact. If we don't have spiritual understanding, we have to think about things in human terms. And we can only have spiritual understanding when we have been reborn, when we've been restored, when we have returned. That means repentance. Means to what? Turn around and find our home in God. Our text says, and they can no longer die. Think about that for a minute. They can no longer die. These are the people who have been resurrected in Christ. When you have been reborn, 
When you have been restored, when you have been revived, you can no longer die. You don't have to worry about your loved one. They're going to be there what? Right there with you. If they've been born again. And then it says, for they are like angels. This does not make any sense in human terms, does it? Not really. Think about it in human terms. And they can no longer die. Everybody know you got to what? Die. And they are like angels. <coughs> These are spiritual terms for what? Spiritual understanding. That's what they're about. Who is that? They can never die. Who is that? It is those of us revived spiritually in Christ. The they are those of us who've made a decision to allow God to transform and change our life. They are those of us who have found the Lord in real time. Why do I say real time? What do I mean when I say real time? Because until we stop dwelling on the past, and some of us dwell too much on the past, mm -hmm. and until we start worrying about the future, we will not find God. God is always in the what? Presence. He's always right here. Right now. And the past and present dominates our thinking and keeps us from finding our soul, which is buried deep in our hearts. Our soul exists only in the present. And living in the present is hard to do. When we understand the need for true revivification, we become ready to truly surrender for the first time in our life. Not when you walk down the aisle. Not when you accepted Jesus Christ in your life. That was a start. But really surrendering means God takes over your life completely. And then those hundred hours or so that you're not asleep or working, you can spend what? Most of that time doing God's business. Not part-time. Not some of the time. Not when you feel like it. But all your life serving God in Jesus Christ. When we become one with God, we become his children. His angels. And we never die. The final part of that scripture was this. Our text says, and they, that's us again, are God's children. That's what it says. Since they are children of the what? Resurrection. Unless we experience revivification, we are not able to recognize who God is in us and who we are in God. This is what it means to give our life to Christ. This is what it means to repent this is what it means to seek forgiveness of your sins and to let stuff go. We need to just let it go. God is ready through our surrender, through our prayer, through our meditations to revive, resuscitate, and restore us right now. There's a sign that when you're coming into Atlanta, I saw it many times. You probably remember it coming off the expressway on I-20 East. I think it was an AME church. Had this huge steeple up in the air. Anybody knows what I'm talking about? And the word said, Jesus what? Saves. It's a big sign. That sign can almost be seen all over. Atlanta. But it needs to be in our heart. We need to know that Jesus truly can save us. He can change our hearts and resuscitate us right now. Right today. 
Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who gave us his life that we might no longer die. For we believe we are your angels. We believe that we are your children. We believe that we are the children of Jesus' resurrection. Help us to grow in that knowledge and continue our journey to you. Amen. You have been listening to The Word of God, which is the foundation for living from the Westminster Presbyterian Church, 20 6th Avenue Southwest with Reverend Joseph Reed. And now until next time, let the church say, Amen.